afternoon. My name is Julianne Tenyus, and I have the pleasure of being the chair of the Board of Directors. And on behalf of the board, welcome this afternoon to our spring concert and our 50 years of musical excellence. So there are many people who have been part of carrying out the mission of the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. And the Board of Directors works with the Executive Artistic Director to ensure that the FWCC is staying true to its mission, um, operating effectively and efficiently, complying with our bylaws, and being financially responsible. So board members can serve two consecutive three-year terms, and I am thankful for the current board, many of who have been working around behind the scenes today, welcoming you, helping seat, and um, those board members who have been part of this unique service opportunity for the past 50 years. So at this time, I would like to ask our current board members and any past board members to stand to be recognized for your service with the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. Now, please help me welcome Lindsay Platt, our Director of Development to the stage. There are many people who have made today possible, and I would ask for your help in recognizing some of those individuals and organizations. We can hold our applause till the end of the list. The National Endowment for the Arts, the Indiana Arts Commission and Arts United, Purdue University Fort Wayne, where the Fort Wayne Children's Choir is a proud company in residence, the College of Visual Arts and Dean John O'Connell, the School of Music at PFW, the Department of Special Events, and especially Lisa Zirkel and Tom Wilson, our, one of our main sponsors, Ambassador Enterprises, our spring concert featured sponsor, which is Steel Dynamics, and our 50th anniversary sponsors, Brotherhood Mutual, Franklin Electric, the James Foundation, who helped uh, send Mr. Meads here with us today, and Kathy Norton. A round of applause. There is a long list of financial supporters, and I ask that you please use the QR code in your program to read that list. Now, I would like you to please help me welcome to the stage our Executive Artistic Director, Jonathan Bassaro. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> We're finally here. There has been a lot of work that's gone in to today's concert. Of course, our students and their directors have been working this entire year, and we're here to celebrate them. We're also going to look back and celebrate the past 50 years. Sarah Davis, one of our past assistant directors and accompanists, wrote, congratulations on your 50th anniversary. I first became involved in the choir when my son's school music teacher recommended that he audition for the Children of Peace Choristers, which later became the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. Director Jocelyn Bassey accepted 11-year-old Jim as a chorister, and thus began, for mother and son, several years of quality choral music making, concertizing, touring, and becoming immersed in all the arts at our five-day Summer Fine Arts Camp held at various Northeast Indiana campuses. One of my favorite events was the Student Talent Show. It was amazing how creative our campers could be. 
We also took bus tours in Canada and the United States, singing in churches, the Windsor Auditorium, and the Colorado Springs Children's Choir Festival. One final note, I loved my work with the FWCC, and I'm so glad to have been a part of its history in shaping the musical lives of our children. I'm so happy that my son Jim and his daughters, Kristen and Lucy, have and still are benefiting from the very talented staff of the FWCC. Yours in song, Sarah Davis. And I'm very glad to have Jim and his daughter Lucy on stage today. Some concert etiquette items I'd like to review. Please do not record or photograph the concert. There are copyright issues, which we would like you to avoid. And it is distracting for your fellow concert goer. We do have professional videographers, and my thanks to Never Ends Productions uh, for being here, and a professional photographer, thank you to Ray Stoip. Um, and all of that content is going to be on our social media channels, so you will be able to look at it and relive the memories. Just don't do it from your cell phone, please. Speaking of distractions and cell phones, now is a good time to put that cellular device on airplane mode. No one wants to be the person with the cell phone going off in the middle of the quiet musical moment. Plus, you might get the look from the conductor. <laughs> if you have a child with you, like my beautiful wife, and that child becomes restless, I'm looking at you, Timothy, please take them to the lobby to recollect themselves. If you need to leave the concert hall, please try to wait until applause to exit and then to enter back into the auditorium. At this time, I have some uh, staff members I'd like to invite onto the stage. So I'm going to ask Ms. Bird, Mrs. Platt, Ms. Neiman, and Mrs. Platty to the stage, please. Earlier today, our three-year members of the FWCC received their three-year pin. This is a special moment commemorating a level of dedication to the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. And they can now wear this silver pin on their uniforms. In the past, we've counted years a little differently. It was my fault, really. Sometimes counting the preparatory class. Uh, moving forward, we're not counting the preparatory class, but I'm not going to take away anybody's years. Don't be worried, right? We're not moving backwards. Counting these years has gotten tricky, particularly during the pandemic. I've even lost count of when we did that piece of music or when was that concert. I have no idea what year it was. So during that time, we had a staff member who reached her third year mark and we missed it. Well, we didn't have a concert like this. So uh, Mrs. Platt is celebrating her fifth year with the FWCC. Um, and Miss Bird, Mrs. Platty, and Mrs. Neiman all are in their third year with Fort Wayne Children's Choir. So we, I would like all of the three-year recipients to please stand and be recognized. Lots of talking, sorry. 50 years warrants plenty of talking. Now, please join me in welcoming to the stage our mayor, Tom Henry. Good afternoon. I have the honor today to read a, a proclamation to all of you, but uh, before I do, I'm going to take a little bit of liberty in, in talking for a few minutes about Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> although his looks and his charm often uh, presents himself as someone who is trustworthy, <laughs> I need to let you know how deceitful that he can be. Uh, about uh, a year and a half ago, I had a birthday, you know, <laughs> and my wife uh, apparently contacted Jonathan behind my back, and uh, after I got off work that day, I went home and I was sitting at the dining room table reading mail, and my wife asked me to go uh, to the front porch, so I did, 
dutifully. And out on my front yard, Jonathan and the children's choir were there singing me happy birthday. If it had ended there, it would have been great. I would have had a real fond memory. <laughs> but uh, after they were done with their mini concert, uh, Jonathan had me do, I don't know, it was an Irish jig or a moonwalk or something on my front porch. Skip around the room. Or skipping, uh, skip. Uh, whatever it was, I have obviously blocked that from memory. Again, if it would have stopped there, I would have been humiliated, but okay. But my neighbors were all standing around videotaping all of this. <laughs> for the last year and a half, I began to request from my neighbors for a new street, for new sidewalks, for new curbs. And of course, the threat is if I don't give it to them, they will release those videos. Now, so far, Jonathan, I've been able to stay away from them, but uh, I want to let you know that I don't know if it's ever going to end. <laughs> but be careful of Jonathan. He can, he can be deceitful. <laughs> well, now that that tomfoolery is done, uh, again, I want to welcome all of you tonight. Uh, this is a very special evening, and because of that, I'd like to read a, a proclamation which will become part of the archives of our city. So when people research the city of Fort Wayne in the future, if they look up this particular day, they'll understand why it was such a special day in the city of Fort Wayne. Whereas in 1973, Jocelyn Bassey created the Children of Peace Choristers to meet the needs of our youth to participate in extracurricular choral experience. And whereas the choristers were incorporated in 1984 as the Fort Wayne Children's Choir, expanding to now serve children from 86 schools in Northeast Indiana and Northwest Ohio. And whereas all children ages birth to 18 years of age, regardless of their background and experience, have the opportunity to participate in one of eight choirs and numerous classes across the community. And whereas the Fort Wayne Children's Choir is recognized for its longevity and excellence in choral music education and serves a vital role in our community developing future arts patrons. And whereas this spring concert celebrates the 50th choir season of Fort Wayne Children's Choir, I, Thomas Henry, Mayor of the City of Fort Wayne, to hereby proclaim May the 7th, 2023, as Fort Wayne Children's Choir Day in the city of Fort Wayne. Wow. Fort Wayne Children's Choir Day. That's quite, got quite the ring to it, Mayor Henry. Thank you. I didn't realize that I had such power. I might have used it about some people that drive too fast on my street. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Henry, for all of your support over the years. Our concert today looks back on the past and ahead towards the future. Each of our ensembles had the opportunity to learn a piece of classic choral literature and then work with a composer to create a brand new piece of music. These world premieres are commonly called commissions in the music world. Normally, when organizations can afford to commission new music, they find a composer to write something for their most advanced ensemble, and they do one at a time. Well, we went for nine new pieces of music, and it has been so rewarding to hear these pieces in the preparation phase. I am really looking forward to hearing them in their final stage for you today. So, we better get to the singing, I think. Uh, I invite you all 
to stand and join the Fort Wayne Children's Choir in our national anthem. Mrs. LaCroix said, talk. So anytime a conductor has a microphone, they take it. The Apprentice Choir represents our first training level ensemble. And uh, these students definitely have the cute factor going. If I was smart, I would pass collection plates around when they were done. But it doesn't represent the very beginning of uh, our teaching. We have a preparatory class for six and seven years old students. And then we have a program called First Steps in Music for children zero to five. That program is run in conjunction with the Allen County Public Library and various other community partners. And I would encourage you to see if you know somebody zero to five that would like to participate in free programming, they should check out First Steps in Music. Have I killed enough time, Mrs. LaCroix? Almost, almost there. It's worth it, though. The wait is well worth it. Good afternoon. Seriously, we're a little nervous. If you don't mind, would you please wave and smile sweetly at the Apprentice Choir right now? <laughs> apprentice, waving back. Apprentice, could you please get in your regular rows? We're a little anxious. If you're not in your right spot, you may go ahead and move. We're nervous. When I was asked to find a composer for a commission piece, I thought, all I want is I love to hear a young child sing beautiful melodies, a nice text, and maybe a little whimsy. That's all. And as I always say, the children that I've been given in Apprentice Choir so often, starting at Choral Fest, 
They have a beautiful voice, a beautiful tone. I hope I don't mess them up because that, there's nothing like a sweet, untouched, young child voice. So as I was on a vacation, I go into bookstores with my husband, and I happened to come across this book called Maybe. And I thought oftentimes, and especially how fitting for today, so many of those alumni were in the Apprentice Choir, and I always wanted them to know the potential that they have, and just by singing and being who they are, how they touch so many people either with their actions or just with their singing. So this book, it says on the cover, a story about the endless potential in all of us. And on the inside cover it says, this is a story for everything you will do and everything you could be, right? And as children and as teachers, we look at our students and we know they can do amazing things. It goes on with, it's for who you are right now and it's for all the magical, unbounded potential you hold inside. So I contacted a composer that he wrote beautiful melodies, he wrote beautiful texts with a little bit of whimsy, and I told him about this book and he ordered it. He said, I read it and some of the pages are tear-stained because it was so meaningful for him as well as for me. He took the meaning of this book and he's crafted the world I would love to see. And it's a beautiful melody, it's a beautiful text with just a little bit of whimsy. And that's how we'll begin our section of the concert and we'll close with hats.
The two pieces Trouble Choir will be performing today are the culmination of several months of conversation and collaboration with our commission composer, Dr. Matthew Emery. When tasked with pairing a children's choir choral gem with our new commission, I sent several of my favorite choral pieces to Dr. Emery and asked him to choose which one to write a response to. He chose Ask the Moon, the third movement from a set entitled Three Settings of the Moon by Ron Nelson. Both Ask the Moon and our new commission, I Have Heard the Music There, bring to life vibrant poetry about nature and the beauty found in the world around us. A couple of weeks ago, the treble choir had the privilege to meet Dr. Emery via Zoom, where he was able to hear his new piece of music sung for the first time and provide us with an inside look in his, into his composition process and the creation of I Have Heard the Music There. I'm so grateful to Dr. Emery for his time and giving our students the gift of such a unique experience. Here is Ask the Moon, followed by the world premiere of I Have Heard the Music There.
Good afternoon. My name is Phyllis Baster. I'm the director of the Lyric Choir. Recently, I asked the Lyric Choir singers what they liked most about this year. They named three things. Our tour to Indianapolis, the songs that they had experienced, and the friends and relationships that they had made throughout the year. I realized that those three things are very important reasons for why many of us do this, including myself. I've had the opportunity to participate in many tours with the Fort Wayne Children's Choir throughout the years. However, both Lyric Choir songs today have a specific connection to Nixica, the North Carolina Summer Institute of Choral Arts. On one of these tours, I had the opportunity to meet the director that year, Mary Getze. Mary is not only an extraordinary educator, but a composer as well. She has an amazing way of teaching music to singers that just makes sense. I learned so much from her. As a composer, she's gifted in turning an old song, in many cases a folk song, into a new song that is interesting, challenging, yet accessible to young singers. That's what she's done today. Our first song called Michael Finnegan about a poor old soul that just has to keep beginning again does just that. It features soloists Amelia Smith and Mallory Wurzbinski. Another enjoyable aspect of Nick Sika is the great quality of music that they do there. I heard our second piece there for the first time several years ago. It's a sweet little song about the rain, half in Spanish, half in English, that will include our attempt to recreate the sounds of the rain. It also includes a small instrument ensemble in which I called on some of my old friends from the Fort Wayne Children's Choir alumni. Members Daniel Bates, Lacey Darnell, Hannah Hobson, Jackson McKinney, Katie North, and Brandon Porter. I hope that you all enjoy today Michael Finnegan and Kay Ava. We certainly have. Thank you. 
mission piece, wink and blink and a nod, is very, very special to me. It's the poem by Eugene Field that I spoke to my sons every night of their lives until they were too embarrassed to let me do it anymore. <laughs> but also, Leanne Starkey, who has a brand new baby, um, was very inspired by the poem and wanted to do something that was lullaby-ish. And so we are going to bring to you today Wink and Blink and Nod by Leanne Starkey. And we have Jameson Cordes as our soloist.
John Rutter's Look at the World is a staple gem of the youth chorale's literature. It invokes imagery of creation and gratitude for the growth and the change around us. In working with our commissioned composer, Jacob Navarud, one of the uh, foremost popular composers of contemporary literature today, uh, we had a series of conversations about what meant be an appropriate text. We went through 10 or so different texts and finally settled on the Sarah Teasdale alchemy. Alchemy talks about the different change that we might share in life and uh, invokes some of that nature theme as well. Um, true to the poem, Jacob Navarud uh, uses a variety of different compositional techniques. The opening is very um, sparse and flowy and interesting, and then he goes to a chorale section, and at one point, the French horn jauntily uh, rollicks through the field, and at the very, very end, our souls open up to this ah that exists in the past, in the present, and then dramatically stops at the precipice of the future. Here is Look at the World and Alchemy.
Got to be careful with those things. I'm going to ask the concert choir to come through first, please. Thank you. The Fort Wayne Children's Choir has some favorite pieces in our music library. And when thinking of iconic living composers whose music we at the Fort Wayne Children's Choir love, Rollo Dilworth was an easy choice, but difficult to get on his schedule. I knew that it would be a great new commission for the Fort Wayne Children's Choir because he wrote a piece for us several years ago when Mr. Meads was here called Hold the Light that's on almost every tour that we take. Rollo was so gracious and kind to write this work for us when our voices rise. After this piece, we'll take a 10-minute intermission. I want you to just take enough time to stretch your legs, use the facilities if you need, go buy some merchandise, but come back so that we don't have to stay here all night long. Right? So we'll try and make it 10 minutes at the end. On your way out also, I know that as you were coming in, some people were, were trying to be conserving these programs, but I bought enough programs for every seat to have one. So uh, make sure you take one of these so I don't have uh, 500 of them at the end of the night. That won't do me very much good. As we're coming on stage with uh, the Apprentice Choir, I just want to share a little bit of this text that stuck out to me. When our voices rise, the world can hear our cries for peace and harmony, for everyone to be free. As our voices echo loud and clear, we can stand the storms and persevere, sing our song, and never fear when our voices rise. The Children's Choir has been through a lot in 50 years. Good, bad, but mostly the good. And we persevere when our voices rise.
great. Can you hear me? Perfect. Good afternoon. My name is Ian Broadwhite. I am proud to serve on the board of directors for Fort Wayne Children's Choir. Today celebrates our students and an incredible year of growing through music. The board would uh, also like to take a moment to recognize our staff uh, and their hard work and dedication to FWCC. You can see a list in your program, I believe it's the second to last page, um, of the staff and the number of years that they have served and worked for the Children's Choir. They all do this work out of selfless care for our students. The board has purchased new name tags for all of our staff members who have been part of FWCC for five years or more. And moving forward, we will commemorate every five years, uh, every five year anniversary. Please join me in thanking them and this dedicated team. Good afternoon, my name is Pam Pearson and it is my privilege to be the director of the Chorister Choir. Last summer, when we announced our theme of growing through music and we knew we were going to be celebrating 50 years of the Fort Wayne Children's Choir, my Chorister Choir and I sat down at our camp in July and we talked about what does growing through music mean and what does it look like and how has music impacted our lives and how might it impact our lives in the future. I asked the students to put those ideas in writing and we sent those ideas to our commissioned composer, Tom Shelton. He put together a beautiful piece for us that celebrates um, what happens when we sing together as a choir. And in addition, he made a special note that I should be sure to tell Rosalie I should be sure to tell Rosalie that he did his best to make it catchy. <laughs> when I Sing will feature two of our singers in the Chorister Choir. Helen Meyer will be playing a glockenspiel part, and Mackenzie Brantley-Moore will be singing a solo um, on that piece. Prior to that, we'll be singing a favorite song for this age group called Festival Alleluia.
The next two selections, presented by the Concert Choir, are another great example of a choral gem contrasted with a brilliant new composition. Both Dancing Song and Take This Gift explore using the voice in a rhythmic, non-lyrical way. Dancing Song is a traditional Hungarian melody arranged by Zoltan Kodai. This challenging a cappella piece unfolds from a simple folk melody into a multi-layer, complex cacophony of sound. Take This Gift by Canadian composer Dr. Tracy Wong perfectly encapsulates our 50th anniversary theme of growing through music. With the text, here, take this gift, it's not mine to keep. Share it far so all may know, let our love for singing grow.
Whenever you commission a composer, you never quite know how it's going to come out. So was the case in 1791. Mozart was commissioned to write a requiem. Well, he wrote part of it. Ironically, the requiem, a mass for the dead, was unfinished by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He died after having written the opening Kyrie and some rough sketches of other movements. About eight measures of the Lacrimosa, they think. Uh, maybe his student Susemeyer took little fragments of things and put it all together to make the requiem that we know today. The text in Latin means, full of tears will be that day when from the ashes shall arise the guilty man to be judged. Therefore, spare him, O God. Merciful Lord Jesus, grant them eternal rest. Amen. Our newly commissioned work by Kevin Hildebrand, thankfully he finished. <laughs> Mr. Hildebrand is the accompanist for the youth chorale and also father to youth chorale and chamber singer Lillian Hildebrandt. Kevin selected another Latin text set in a very different style. From our crying in Lacrimosa, we switch then to, because I love your commands more than gold, more than pure gold, and because I consider all your precepts right, I hate every wrong path. Your statutes are wonderful. The unfolding of your words gives light. Note, he chose a text about gold. He must have known that gold is for the 50th anniversary.
At this time, I'm going to invite members of our alumni choir to find their way to the stage, and maybe they're already doing that. Good. They remembered the cue. In 1973, Jocelyn Bassey began the Children of Peace Choristers, which a few years later became known as the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. Mrs. Bassey wishes that she could attend today's concert, but the travel from Michigan was not possible, and I know that she is watching via our live stream. It is my pleasure to read to you her greetings. Good evening from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I am coming to all of you this evening to tell you, parents, grandparents, friends, choristers, and the whole Fort Wayne Children's Choir staff, about how pleased I am to have had the dream of having a children's choir in the Fort Wayne area. When I was evaluating the offerings to children here, I was reminded of youth orchestra, youth theater, youth ballet. There was something missing in all of this. And, of course, singing, which all can do, was the missing link. By enriching the children's lives with the opportunity to go beyond the excellent music education in schools that the students were already receiving, we were able to grow and excel with opportunities for choristers to begin traveling across the United States giving concerts. We even sang at the very first 4th of July celebration in Washington, D.C., and other venues in the area, as well as in Buffalo, Buffalo New York, and west as far as Salt Lake City, Utah. We had a wonderful beginning, and knowing now how the choir has grown is the highlight of my career. I welcome all of the alumni who are able to be here today. Remember that you are the ones who started this gloriously successful choir. You worked hard and left a legacy for all who are now singing with the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. Be proud of how it all began. I thank each and every one of you for making this all happen. My thoughts, prayers, and my heart are always with you as you continue on your journey, Jocelyn Bassey. I didn't know the response that we would get from putting a call out for an alumni choir. It turns out that our alumni like to sing. So a little poll. Uh, how many of you actually sang for Mrs. Bassey? Excellent. We have alumni that are spanning the decades, and in two short rehearsals, well, it's sort of like riding a bike. So now, to help lead our alumni choir, please welcome to the stage my friend, and former artistic director, Fred Meads. So I have too much to say, but I'm, I'm not gonna say it. I'm just gonna tell you that I've had just an incredible time with these amazing alums. I got to know them a little bit, talk about their lives now as grown-ups. Um, and what struck me was, as I talked to them, that they have this incredible love for FWCC. The, org the, the musical opportunities that they experienced here have just left such a strong imprint on their lives. And today, they are here to relive a little bit of that incredible memory. Me too. It's been an absolute joy to come back here to Fort Wayne and celebrate with everyone. I want to congratulate Jonathan, his fabulous staff of conductors, accompanists, support staff, and what they do here to keep this organization going. And hopefully, for another 50 years, Jonathan, if you'll be still here. <laughs> Today, we're going to sing two of the favorites of this organization. You're going to hear another piece by Rollo Dilworth, Everlasting Melody. This was on our first recording, for those of you who were here back then. Um, and we might ask you to clap along again, too. And then we'll sing Homeland, a very passionate, emotional 
um, powerful piece of music that's based on a theme by Gustav Holst in his work called The Planets. This is a, based on the Jupiter theme. And the text of this piece reflects the love of country and those who have gone before us, before us and sacrificed to make it possible. I really, really hope you enjoy what you're about to hear. We also have a couple of singers, alums, that are joining us via Zoom. Uh, we'll see how the, the lag on sound goes for them. <laughs> they wanted to be a part of this special day. They had a little fear of missing out, so we thought, well, we'll put them up here on the screen with us so they can sing along. And they can see Mr. Mead, so all is well.
So I have an extra little surprise. <clears throat> you can sit down. <laughs> Mrs. Bassey is right. Those who helped build this gift to our community should take pride in what they've done. Past artistic directors, including Mrs. Bassey, Ty Mogsig Miller, Fred Meads, Brian Clissold, past executive directors, Elaine Skoog, Kim Hinsey, Katie Wilkes Zeman, Denise Bates. There have been many, many staff members who have been such an integral part of the children's choir family. Kathy Norton, Dorothy Kataka, Sarah Davis, Jan Ormiston, Berkeley Goosey, Steve Snyder, Mitch Rorick, Matt Mockamer, Fernando Tarango, Tim LaCroix, Becky Walter, Heidi Emmert, Lois Foote, Robert Nance, Joan Phillips, Janet Treadway, Donna Haywood, Susie Pierce, Tina Christ, Amber Bothot, and I'm sure that there's others that I've forgotten and I'm sorry. <laughs> but these people have poured themselves into this organization. So if you have ever worked for the Fort Wayne Children's Choir, would you stand now so that we can recognize you? So when I asked Fred to come back and help lead our alumni choir, uh, Fred, Fred grew the children's choir to incredible heights. And when I came to the children's choir, I was just trying to not screw it up. <laughs> I knew that I should have something special for Mr. Meads and for all of our past directors. So I asked our mutual friend, Robert Hobby, to write just one more tune, because What's a 10th commission? <laughs> to honor Fred and all of those who have helped build the FWCC. So please enjoy, may love and laughter light your days.
every year it gets harder. And some of this might be because I can't believe that they're seniors. I remember their auditions for the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. Now you can read their years of service, where they went to high school, and their post high school plans and your programs next to their pictures of some very grown up looking students. But what you can't read is how proud I am of them for their work, both in the children's choir and beyond. We've spent the day looking at the past, and I hope that you also are seeing the future on this stage, and it is bright. Please join me in congratulating these seniors on over 70 years of singing in the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. When things slow down, that's what I told my wife we'd take our first vacation when I came here 11 years ago. It doesn't really slow down at the children's choir. This moment is an incredible celebration, but we're going to keep on going for the next 50 years. So auditions are in a week. If you know a young singer who would benefit from the Fort Wayne Children's Choir, please share your support of this organization with them. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Schlicker to come out and lead us in We Gather Here Together. Our last piece is Here's to Song, and it speaks truly to how wonderful it is to be together. Um, at the end of this program, I want you to take your children home. <laughs> Especially those. And to find them, you will need to go to their holding rooms, which are listed on the back of this program. So go to these rooms to pick up your children, all the first floor rooms are, well, everything is that way. Down the hallway, you'll find them. There's a few on the second floor upstairs. The Whitley room is at the front of the building, so don't walk all the way back. But please do take your kids home. I'd also ask that you not stay to mingle in this room necessarily, because we've been here a long time, and I pay by the hour. So if you could mingle outside, I would appreciate it very much. Here's to song. 